Uh, please welcome Anna Dubkava. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Does that work? Does that work? Yes. Um, it's amazing to be here. Uh, it's really nearly lunch, so hold in there. Um, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes about snapshot testing. Um, how, how does it work? What it actually means to do snapshot testing? What are the good things? What are the bad things? And whether you should probably use it or not. What is it? Um, so it's a, this like new way of testing uh, JavaScript, um, potentially mainly React. Um, and I guess it's, um, it's kind of based on, oh sorry, the triangle, right? Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of like a unit testing, but a little bit different because it kind of changes the paradigm of how you think about your tests. Normally in unit testing, you would write the tests first and then you would try to match your code to the test in an ideal world. Um, whereas in snapshot testing, you kind of like turn that upside down and you first write your code and then make a snapshot and just are checking that things are not changing unless you actually want them to change. So what is a snapshot? Uh, normally you would think about a screenshot of like Google Fonts or something. And although that has its uses in end-to-end -end testing for better or for worse, that's not really what we are going to be talking about here. Um, but this was the original inspiration for snapshot testing because we were thinking, well, we can compare visually whether things have changed and whether we like that or not. Can we some do something like that with our code? Yes, we can. Um, this is a snapshot created by the Chest or Ava uh, library, and it's basically just a snapshot of your DOM. Um, so in this uh, particular case, we have a button, um, and it has an icon, and that's about all it, all it says. But you can see that it's quite detailed because it shows you all the like accessibility attributes and the path, etc. So it kind of has all the information you might need to test about a button. So how does it actually work? How do I create a snapshot? Well, imagine that you have a button component um, and you render the children there and you also optionally render an icon if you supply an icon source. Um, and now t writing the test is actually really simple because normally you would need to write, okay, so there is, um, the children, I need to check that they are rendered. I need to check that there is an image um, that it has uh, empty old, that it has role presentation, etc. So you need to write a lot of different cases for just one case, really. Um, so instead, we can just say, okay, the button adds an icon if I give it an icon source, and you know, I render it, and then I say to match snapshot, and that's pretty much it. In what two, three lines of code you get everything you need to check that your button is doing what you actually want it to do. Um, there are a few things I would like to point out here. We found out throughout using um, snapshot testing that really rendering the whole component or mounting the whole component, especially if it's like a component composed out of components, is really tedious. It becomes really difficult to manage those snapshots. So that's why we are using shallow rendering from Enzyme, and then there's this library, Enzyme to JSON, which uh, transforms whatever enzyme gives you into the snapshot. And then when we run the test, it will just say, okay, there was one snapshot written. So as you can see, so far, we haven't really made any real expectation. We just said, well, there will be a button and it will match a snapshot, and that's it. And it writes the snapshot file. But later on, um, let's say a designer comes back to us and says, well, you know, the icon that is on the button that is on the left, now we want it on the right, is that possible? So you go ahead and you change the component so the, the icon is rendered after the, the children. But if you were writing normal unit tests, that would not actually make any difference for your unit tests, right? You're still having the children, you're still having the, the image, but as far as your tests are concerned, nothing has changed. Well, for snapshot tests, something has changed. So it really shows you nicely that it catches everything, even the things you would never think about. Um, so in here it says, okay, well, the submit is at a weird place. Are you sure that you really wanted to do this? 
So sometimes it would point out that I made a mistake in this particular case. I would say, no, this is definitely right. And I would update the snapshot uh, using the CLI tool. And then it would just tell me, yep, yeah, one snapshot updated, it's done. So in terms of testing frameworks, um, at the moment, it's pretty much Chest versus Ava. Um, so Jest is the one that introduced um, snapshot testing to begin with, and they kindly put it into like a separate package. So later on, I took that package and uh, implemented it into Ava so that we could use it um, together with the testing framework of our choice. Um, Ava doesn't have all the features. So for example, it wouldn't delete obsolete snapshots from your test file. So there's a little bit more management you might need to do, just as sort of like the fully fledged um, testing framework. But it's, it's really easy to use uh, them in both. Um, one of the things that I would really uh, like to give a huge shout out to, to Jest team is their watcher. They have an amazing interactive watcher you saw in the screenshots uh, a few slides back. And it really allows you to just like press one key to just, I don't know, run the files that you wanted to run or um, update snapshots. So that makes managing the snapshots and running your tests really, really simple. So what is good about snapshot testing? As I mentioned already, um, it really allows you to do better test coverage. Um, somehow by default, I guess. Um, as you saw, it literally takes every single thing you put into that component. Um, and if you combine it with like default props and prop types, et cetera, you get a really nice sort of like well-round test for any unit, for any component that you actually write. Um, and you don't have to write, I don't know, 10 different cases for, for one button. Um, it's really easy to write. As you saw, it's just like a few lines of code. Um, uh, yeah, you don't need to really like go through a hassle of actually, you know, like finding the right element without the element and making sure that the element is not the right attribute because everything is done for you automatically. The snapshots are really easy to update, not only update, but also to manage them in general, you know, like update them, delete them, etc. It's kind of all automatic. The tooling around it is really good. And I would say like the best use case for snapshots is refactoring. Um, let's say that you're changing something, I don't know, let's say you have a list of components and you're changing something in one of those components and you're not quite sure how that will affect the rest of the application because probably you were reusing those components all over the place. And snapshot testing is really amazing at pointing out all those different places where things have changed so that you can get, then go and make sure that everything still ties in together. Um, there are obviously some bad things um, about snapshot testing as well. The first thing is that I already pointed it out, it's uh, no TDD. Um, you just create a snapshot based on whatever code you have already written, and you sort of iterate slowly over that. I personally find that not a problem for React components because I would normally develop them in not so much of a TDD way. Um, but you know, if for, for some things such as business logic, that's really not ideal. So in the end, we completely dropped using snapshot testing for anything but React components, really. Uh, merge conflicts are another tricky bit because really the snapshot is just a string. So you are basically merging two strings and, and the tools are not really well made for that. So you might run into suddenly having like four different con conflicts in a snapshot file and you wouldn't really know how to solve them in, a, in an easy way. Uh, another thing is this description because now you don't have to write all those 10 different cases for a button, so how do you document what the button actually does? I would say that the answer is, well, the snapshot kind of documents it, but again, it's a different way of looking at things because you don't just like print out so what the test says in the description. You need to look at some other places to get it. And the last two points are kind of going together hand in hand. Um, it's so easy to use them that we would just like to throw it at literally anything. We wouldn't want to write those difficult TDD tests. We just want to have things done fast and done them automatically for us. 
So we found out that we are using them in our project way too much. Um, so really, we were trying to sort of like step back and, um, and actually not use them that much. Um, last but not least, should you use them? Should you adopt them uh, in your project? I would say definitely yes. Be careful not to overuse them. Always make sure that you're actually using them in valid places, especially React components. Um, but they're definitely great. If you're using already just or Ava, they are literally super simple to implement and they will probably add a lot of value to your writing tests. Thank you. I think we have time for questions, if there are any. There are questions. Yes, would you consider using snapshots to test reducers? Amazing question, yes we did. Um, but it's kind of what I said in the end that maybe that's not ideal because you, that's kind of like business logic. You want to write that in TDD. You want to make sure that what you expect you would get is actually what you're getting. So I would say snapshot testing in that case is not ideal. Uh, next question is, do you consider this approach, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you consider this approach of snapshot testing more reliable than using visual regression tools? Yes. Uh, on current project, we are using both, and I suppose it depends on the visual regression tools themselves, but really, it's, uh, it's much more foolproof and much more reliable because you're comparing code, you're comparing data structures to images, and obviously, computers are much better with code than with images at the moment, anyway. Do you keep the snapshot in the repo? In, indeed, um, we commit them, that's why there are merge conflicts in there. Um, that's probably like the only way to do it, but as I mentioned before, it's like also a useful way of documenting your code. So it's actually not a bad thing. It's, it's probably a bit weird to begin with, but you get used to it. Is snapshot uh, simply a diff of images? Um, well, no, a snapshot is a snapshot of the current state of your application. So if you take a screenshot, it's just a state of the screen, and if you take a snapshot of your code, it's simply whatever the code is at that moment of you making the snapshot. How do snapshots work with code coverage? Um, surprisingly really well. Um, and that's, that's one of those things why we implemented them to begin with, is because we needed to aim as close to 100% code coverage as possible. And we figured out that with snapshots, it's kind of like a, an easy win. Um, especially if you're using Jest that has a coverage sort of inbuilt with it. Um, you will find it very easy. Using snapshot, can I test logical stuff instead of just UI changes? Um, yes, yes, you can definitely test that, but as I mentioned, I probably wouldn't go for that. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's all we have time for. Thank you very much. If you have any more questions, come find me later. Thank you.